Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ball in my core, high step is a layer. My life like a movie, just keep moving, it's a trailer. Shopping in my kitchen, got me trying to get my cake up. Thank God for all this coming to me, not straight up. What's up, man? What's up? How are you? You know, I'm good, always good. Yeah, you were right about Minnesota. Told you. Told you, straight up. What'd you tell me? I told you that defense wins championships or defense wins. Well, Mavs about to cook them with the offense, but yeah. I mean, okay, it's been one. Nah, I actually have, I have the T-Wolves winning, so. so I mean, backtracking. No, I'm not backtracking. backtracking. I, got, I said T-Wolves in seven from the beginning. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think. Um, is that a stance? T wolves in seven. You said I don't take stances, so that, that's a stance. T wolves in seven. Okay. Yeah. That's, a, that's yeah. T wolves in seven. I'll give is you that, that. A stance. That is a stance. There you go. That's the first take I've ever seen. You, you, prediction you, you, I've you ever, ever heard. You ever go on Instagram? Be There's a bunch of takes for me. You can, well, I'm saying that's the first probably, prediction I, I've ever seen. Oh, I pulled up predictions. I said Knicks and six versus Sixers. That came true. There's, there's receipts. Mean, not on our, said, not on our I said, podcast. I said Luka Doncic was going to be the best player in that draft pick. That happened. I said Tyrese Halliburton. The Knicks should have passed on him. Obviously, that's true because he's still playing in the playoffs. I said that Ben Matherin was going to be. I'm talking player. about this podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not, uh, that's all okay. I mean. Because I, I, hear... I see you liking the posts and seeing the stuff. So, you, so you've seen things. I, I, I see it for this mm. podcast. But. I know that you did say Denver wasn't losing. I did say that. So, why was what, what made me so wrong about that? I mean, obviously in hindsight, we know why that I am wrong. But why do you think that that happened? I said right after the first round of the series, I said this to you, and you you dismissed it. I said Denver looks vulnerable, even though they beat the Lakers. The way they they were down twenty three out of the four games. They had to make second half comebacks every single game. Their bench looks depleted. They look vulnerable. I, those are my words. You, oh, no, no, no. Minnesota's too young, blah, blah, you, whatever you were saying, right? And then even and then after that, they, Minnesota went up two games to nothing. I said it was over. Most people said it was over. You said they were going to come back. Minnesota, they did come back. And then Minnesota ended up beating them, you know? Like, so... Like I just saw, like first of all, Minnesota is the best defensive team in the league. I don't, they're not the best defensive team in the playoffs so far, but they're right up there. Um, but they've been, you know, it's funny who the best defensive team in the playoffs is right now. Who? It's Dallas. Yeah, Dallas, I mean, they got they got Dallas, a lot more. They got more a lot more athletic at the trade deadline. Dallas has been the best defensive team since uh, I think the last month of the you regular season into the Cavs playoffs. Obviously, a lot better on defense, but Kyrie and Luke are playing a lot more defense as well. I think they like. I think both players are capable of playing good defense. 100%. I think that they only play defense when they sniff something real, a championship potentially. You know, which is sad. Like, uh, you know, that's why I, I really like people who just play defense all the time. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, like, like, like Luca made some great defensive plays last night. Like, yeah, he, stole he a can lob, play Rudy. defense. You know what I mean? And he, you know. Yes, he might not be as athletic or as fast as most players in the NBA, but he's so strong. He is so much stronger than people, great and he instinct, moves his feet instincts. really well. He, you know, great instincts. He gets in the passing lanes. Like, I mean, he could do that all the time, you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, he's kind of front runs his defense until when he needs to. And, uh, you know, that could have bitten him in the ass in, in, in the past, but, you know, maybe they win a championship this year. You see, who, who knows? Um but uh, Minnesota, I got man, I got them winning in seven as well too. They're just they're frustrated. You're just trying to be like combo. No, no, no. I, I, I definitely not. They um they're frustrated. You, you took my take. I guess I took your take, bro. I had Minnesota winning it all, nigga. You can pull it up on the receipts from yeah. months be in the regular season. I said that shit. You were like, well, they're too young. Blah blah. You know? I don't know if you said they. You know what's crazy though? You actually said that um, Denver would win, but you wouldn't be surprised if Minnesota won. Yeah, you did say that. Okay. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, but before that was when the playoffs started, okay. right? In the regular season, I I'd said Minnesota. I was like, we were talking about championship teams, and I was like, 
don't sleep on Minnesota. I think Minnesota say don't sleep on them because they are they're a great defensive team. Like mm-hmm. like that's just what it comes down to. Defense, bro, especially wing defenders, change the whole landscape of the game. You know, and their defense was awful last game. And that's why they lost. And they still were in position to win that game. They should have won that game. You know what I mean? Ant, 6 for 16 again. You know what I mean? Shot awful. Look tired. Cat, shot awful in the first half. He 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 hit some shots in the second half. You know what's crazy about Cat? He is just as talented as any big man in the NBA. But he's not the best big man in the NBA. I mean, like he's just as talented as Jok- as Jokic like, and Embiid. Just talent wise, like he could really do everything. Reggie Miller said that he might be the greatest big man shooter ever to play the game, yeah. and he's like, we also had Dirk Nowitzki, like, and he is a better three point shooter. He's a better shooter than Dirk, Dirk Nowitzki. His that, numbers are that, just that's better. Fine. That, that's Dirk fine. is a much better yeah, player, yeah, yeah, but yeah. but like, but that's he's a great shooting, great shooter. Yeah, if you're shooting impacts, winning is like, yeah, he's a great great shooter. He can. He can like he can score in so many different ways. He's just his he's just inconsistent. Like he he's inconsistent throughout the game. He's consistent throughout the the season. Like you know the way he talks on interviews is inconsistent. Of, of course, I mean, bro, he it, it's just like he'll he'll give you zero in a quarter and then give you. F- 20 in the next it's just yeah. he's all over the place you cannot predict when he's gonna score how he's gonna score um it's all this bro he settles for threes far too much when he's off like yeah um yeah i just i think he needs to have a little bit more craftiness to his game because he really has two moves it's a, it's a three a fake go drive to the right and like a swooping kind of so lack of diversity in the skill set no, he's got diversity in the skill set. Lack of lack of displaying of it. You know what I mean? Like, he, I mean, I like Cat, but it's just he 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 got to get over some of his own demons, man. He he just he just honest, honestly just gets uh he gets very complacent, you know, with with uh kind of standing around. He also stands around a lot. Like for someone his size, like when you don't get the ball, get some offensive rebounds, be a, be an impact player off the ball as well too. Yeah. You know, you mentioned Luca and um who's an international player. The all NBA team this year, I believe four out of five were um international players, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um it was Tatum and four international players, if I'm not mistaken. Um Jalen Rose came out and said that NBA jobs are becoming extinct for players in the States. I mean, that's hyperbole, but you know, I understand what his sentiment, um, like it'll never, they'll never be extinct. There's always going to be great, uh, American players. Yeah. Like, um, um, American players. I think what may change is who the best players in the league are. It has. You know, I mean, it's already changed, but like consistently. Yeah. yeah. Like I've said this already on the on this podcast, the advantage that European players have because of how they approach sports in their country is just allows players like Luca to be so much more developed because he's been a professional basketball player since he was 13. He was taken out of school to really focus on that, right? Like that's just that just doesn't happen here. I'm not saying that it should happen, you know, we do have a strong emphasis on education. I I get that. But just based off of the dynamics like but, yeah. You know, like that that like if you're a pro basketball player at 13, you're working with professionals and you have a you have a professional schedule. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's just different. No, you know? I agree. I agree. So, I think but one thing Jalen Rose said was like the, he mentioned the word determination, and I don't think that's the right word though, because players in the States work on their game more than even players overseas from an individual standpoint. Like, okay. We're like we we have like a skill development culture here. Okay, so do you do, let me ask you something, right? Um if you have two children, right? And one grows up with really, really wealthy parents, right? They have access to whatever they want to do, right? And they, and then you have another kid that grew up in a very impoverished 
uh, place, but like still has the mentality to go after what they want. Who do you think is going to have more hunger for what they, with their their desires? The 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 later one, the second one. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what when he says determination, I think that's what he's referring to. You know, kids like Americans. Even if you grew up in this in 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 the hood of America. You know, the opportunities are still better than a lot of these foreign countries that these players are coming from. You know what I mean? So, like, 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 think about how many people a guy like Nikola Jokic is going to inspire. Small village he came from, right? So there's other kids that are going to be like, man, look at this guy from our, from, from our, our city that we can, like our country that we can ride behind. I want to work hard. I want to do what I, what. Need, it needs to be done like him and not saying americans don't do the same thing but there's so much more here to distract you as well too you know what i mean like so i just think that there's a just different type of grind that these european players have um there's also like i think people don't understand the national pride associated with it as well too right I'm doing a, pot, a a documentary right now about this Australian competitive eater, right? And all he keeps talking about is, I need to do this for my country to represent in America. Yeah. I need to showcase them. Like, even when he gets third place, he goes back to his home as a hero. You know what I mean? There's a different level of pride associated with that. Yeah, when you're fighting for something outside of yourself, yeah. you often do it with more intensity, right? Yeah, so, and I think Americans don't have that as much, you know what I mean? Um, you know, like not saying that they don't, I mean, people do, you know, yeah, I'm from, you know, whatever, Gary, Indiana, I want to put my, yeah. my city on a map, whatever, you know, like that happens. But, you know, you going to go back to Gary, Indiana, and some motherfucker's going to hate on you. Yeah. Somebody like, oh yeah, I busted that motherfucker's ass. He wasn't even that nice. He don't yeah. deserve to be in the league. That you know, I I just don't see that that happening as much when Jokic goes back home. You know what I mean? Like, like so, um, it's just a different type of pride. So, um, and that those are all these. I mean, you're talking about finite little details now to add additional motivation, to add a you know, like, and those things are. They seem little, but at the same time, those when you're talking about the greatest athletes in the world, those are the tiny little things that give you an edge. Yeah, I think you're right, but I also think that it's not a lack of motivation for American players. Like, I think a lot of kids really want to make it, even here, you know? I don't think it's like... No, I mean, I'm not saying... You hear what I said? I said... Yeah, you said the motiv extra motivation, not a lack of motivation, right? If two people are are very motivated, but one person has an edge slightly because of this one thing, maybe like they were they they you know uh, like like a coach never believed in them and they want to prove this person wrong. That's an edge. That's a slight edge. That doesn't take away from the motivation of the other person. It just means somebody else has another thing that on their shoulder that they want. You know, like a guy like Josh Hart. It's great player, but like people didn't believe in him. He was, you know, or Jalen Brunson. People didn't believe in him. Yeah. Like, like Jalen Brunson could have been as good as, uh, um, let's say, uh, um, um, I don't know, like, uh, De'Aaron De De Fox in college, right? De'Aaron Fox is a top five pick. Jalen Brunson's what in the se late second round, right? Yeah, right. They could have been equally good. But because one guy was slighted, now he's got this extra motivation. That doesn't take away from from the motivation that uh, 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 De'Aaron Fox has to prove, to, you know, to be a top five Some guy. Just have the personality to find the slights too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's the, like there's there's people that you need. They 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 create it out of nowhere. You know what I mean? I, they manifest it out of random scenarios. You know, Shaq used to make up stuff about players. Jordan used to like you know feed like find information about players to talk shit about them personal shit so that they get mad so he they could play he could they could play harder against him to motivate him like i mean people i mean i'm sure lebron does a bunch of stuff with the media to add motivation you know speaking of lebron he's saying that his son's getting hated on um i kind of agree with it because you know mark spears came out and he Talked about how he spoke with two, two anonymous scouts 
that said he's not ready for the NBA. He's not an NBA prospect. And he read through all these things on why he's not an NBA prospect. And he seemed kind of happy doing it. It was a little weird in my opinion. Um, here's the thing, though. Bronny James is an NBA prospect because he's going to play in the NBA. Like, he is going to be an NBA player. And if he's not in the NBA, which he will be, he'll be in the G League. And if you're in the G League, you're an NBA prospect. So to say Bronny James is not an NBA prospect is ridiculous. And there's people in the media actually doing that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's like, here's the thing. Like, like there's a, there's such thing as an NBA prospect and an NBA player. Like, But they're saying he's not even a prospect. Like, the, the message Mark Spears relayed from that scout was that he's not an NBA prospect. From this anonymous scout. Okay, I mean, I don't. I like uh, maybe. I mean, maybe the word prospect was used loosely. Like at the end of the day, if you're in combine, you're basically an NBA prospect. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, there's a realistic. There's re- like being an NBA player. Like there's there's a realistic expectation of what that is, mm. right? Because like. Bro, I've been to. I used to. I used to um, date a G League uh, ref, right? And she used to get me to G League games. And you know, you just like you just assume they're not that good because you know, like they're in the G League. Like, hell no, I wouldn't assume that. I mean, because like you play with, like I play with like, other players overseas that play in the G League that are really good. No, 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 but they're not that good in comparison to NBA players. Nah, I don't. Yeah. I think. Like, like, t- like talent and athleticism. Why? There's a lot of guys in there that are okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But here's the thing: you're a different perspective. A guy who played overseas, right? Gotcha. You know what I mean? Like, from a just a random perspective. Like, bro, people talk about yeah. the G League like it's trash all the time. You know why? So though? most Can I say people. One thing? You know why? I feel like people like look at LeBron James and Michael Jordan, and they look at it from the top down instead of going through the channels of the bottom up. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Okay, you could say that, but there's a ton of bubble G League players that come into the league and they don't play well. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, like, or just never last. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, people have been lobbying for Mac McClung to be in the NBA forever. He's fucking MVP of the G League, and this motherfucker can't get in the league. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, so you just based off of that, you assume the G League players aren't that good. Do you but think the G League players are good. really good. Of course. I, you know, I went to a bunch of games and these motherfuckers were re- like, like. Um, and not just like, oh, like I guess you you just assume G League players are like all role players. What? Right? Who assumes this shit. There's a lot of people that just assume like you because you're be- comparing them like it's all perspective of being in the NBA because there's not many G League players that come out to the league and then end up being stars. They ultimately end up being role players. So you just assume it's a whole bunch of role players, right? The thing is though, we I talked about this before. The reason why there's more role players because if you're a star type player, it, that's the hardest way to make the league. Do you see what I'm saying? No, I understand yeah, that. Yeah, so there's just going to be less spots for those guys who could get buckets and that's the reason they're in the G League cuz they don't fit an NBA role but they're fucking dead nice. I understand yeah. that, but I'm you're you're having a different conversation with me. I'm talking about from the perspective of most people yeah, don't that don't know you. the nuances of this. I understand. So you got to stop cut me off. I know you know this shit. Okay, go I'm ahead. talking about most people, gotcha. right? Like this is the G League is not branded as this amazing league, fam. You know what I mean? Like it, it has a stigma for a reason. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I I said that because I was shocked at the talent level when I watched G League games, right? Dudes were dropping 40 in their sleep. Do you know who Russ Smith is? Yeah. Yeah, so I know Russ Smith's dad, right? Russ Smith Sr., right? He, he's an actor, actually, right? Mm-hmm. He's he's acted in uh, several films with me, right? Super, one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life, right? This motherfucker's son would put up 40. Yeah, he's just bucket getter. 40. I think he had like 80 in China, right? Yo, bro, yeah. like stupid numbers, bro. Yeah. And he didn't even sniff the NBA. Like Yeah, yeah. So it's it's is be so like why do you think that is? Why do you think he didn't sniff the NBA? He didn't fit a role. I he's not a star. I, I like I don't believe that. I think that are you just arguing just to argue? No, I don't like. I so think, what's the reason then? I think that he just didn't get someone who believed in him. Like, here's the thing. Like, I get it, right? Like, you could, you, you could. 
certain people, right? If you look at them face value, you're like, oh, you know what? This is their problem. They're not going to be able to do this at the next level. They're not going to be able to do that. And then there's certain people who are like, okay, what does this person do good at? And how can we maximize that? Like, I don't know if Russ ends up being a star in the league, but I think he could easily fit a role. He could have, at his peak, what fit a role in the NBA and been a scorer and been, a, you know, like if a team and a coach and a system was willing to believe in him and play to his strengths. At the right? end of the day, we'll never know. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But at the end of the day, I think that like, like who you played for, what, like where you got drafted, like what your, your, your resume is plays such a huge part in like your success in the league. Obviously your game plays a huge part as well too. But I think that there's certain players that like, if someone didn't fucking believe, like if someone didn't believe in Jalen Brunson, that motherfucker would be in the G League probably doing the exact same shit. You know what I mean? Like someone had to believe in this dude, give him the give him the opportunity, let this man cook. Because all people saw was unathletic, not a three point shooter, you know, kind of like a tweener guard. You know what I mean? That's all people saw. They saw the things that he wasn't. Rick Carlisle said, yo, this dude can do this. Let me give him more of an opportunity. And I don't think the thing is that coaches like Rick Carlisle get to do that. Coaches that have tenure, that have been coaching for 10, 15 years, that they felt like their jobs were solid. Yeah. I can take a risk on a guy like, like this. Like the guys with the heat would spur. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That's why the, the Spurs are, I mean, the, uh, the Heat are always able to get these talented people because they have a coach and a system that is down-packed where they can take a risk on a guy who plays unconventional that doesn't fit a specific niche that the NBA has. So that's why I think there's a lot of really good players that don't make it. I think that, yeah, maybe if you just throw them in a system and you're like, okay, you were, you were shooting seven, 27 shots a, or 21 shots a game here. We need you to take three shots now and be effective or seven shots now and be effective. Of course that's not going to work. You know what I mean? You, you just took this guy completely out of his environment, and now you're like, you're a bubble player. You're on a 10-day contract. We need you to hit seven shots from just the corner over here. Like, who the fuck can do that? You know what I mean? Even superstars probably couldn't adjust like that in the NBA. Oh, yeah, it's hard. But if you take a guy, see the talent, and you have the time to maturate the talent, nurture it, find ways for that person to be successful. That's why it's incredibly beneficial to be a lottery pick because you have the grace to fuck up for, for people to mold you. You have three years to figure your shit out when you're a fucking bubble player and you're, you, 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 you were drafted in the second round. You got maybe three months to figure it out. You know what I mean? That's a whole different type of pressure, fam. That's why I think a lot of those dudes don't make it. I think I think the right coach, the right system could get them. They they could be they could flourish, but I just don't think anyone really has the 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 uh, the runway to let these people figure out their games. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's my opinion. You mentioned Randall. Sorry, you mentioned Brunson. How you feel about the next season, man? Um, they look pretty good without Randall. You think they should trade him? Uh, do I think they should trade Julius Randall? Um, probably. Yeah, they did. They 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 did great without him. Um, his value is very high. He had a great season. Um, twenty four and ten, I think, or 10, 24 and twelve, maybe. Um, I think he'd be a good piece for. Let me see. I don't. I don't. I mean, like, who's a team that really needs rebounding? Um. Pacers, but they got Pascal already. Yeah, I think he'd be a great fit for like the Suns. You know what I mean? Like Definitely. the Suns would really could use a player like that. Um, but it's another guy who don't really. He actually shot good from three this year. Yeah, he though. shot. Yeah, he shot like. Almost but I don't know, like that. 30. I don't know how believable, even with his sample size, like that three point shot is. Who yeah. knows? But I mean, yeah. the, the guy, the guy. You know, I think he can... And he's another ISO scorer, which yeah, might not fit well. But I think he also can... Like, he just became an ISO scorer in the Knicks. He wasn't an ISO scorer two teams before that. But he, I don't know if he can know? revert revert now. I think he can. Yeah. I think I think I mean I think his ego would be then, bruised because he's a he's a very he's a he's he's if he's, he can he's, revert, he should stay on the Knicks. 
<laughs> yeah, that'll be tough. That's that, I mean, that's that's tough. He, I mean, I know he's a powder though. Like he's the type of person yeah. he likes to powder a lot. You know, when things don't go his way, um, you know. But I, I think that, I think he's got to look in the mirror, and, you know, and realize like who he is as a player. Like, like I think every single person on the Knicks, maybe Jalen Brunson too, but you know, maybe Jalen Brunson's real. I think every single person on the Knicks is being elevated by the system and it's by the chemistry you know what i mean nova nick yeah it's just it's just like i don't i think all of them teams, all the great teams do that well i think the knicks in particular are the players individually aren't as good as they are on the knicks like if they went like if if, the, if somebody went like if if somebody know. went to like to let's say josh hart was they left. Josh Hart left. I think went to another team. about the opportunity thing you were talking about. I think he's really great with any team that gives him a great opportunity. Maybe I don't know if he's four, thirty-five points a game type nah, good. You know what I mean? Average. He didn't. He had thirty-five point games, but he didn't. I mean, 35. but he, I don't even think like like he's even good, just bro. coming out of nowhere getting thirty-five, getting forty. Right? I don't even know if that's really his game. Part, the chemistry part. Yeah, I, I. He's a starting NBA two guard. I agree with that, yeah. but I don't. I don't. I don't. I think that someone might. Take on that contract. Expect him to be like. I just don't think he's gonna like. Like that, I don't that something hustle, about that the Knicks. Hustle, that hustle and that athleticism and that skill set is not going anywhere. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he'll be effective. Yeah. I don't think he'll be that guy though. I think same with Josh Hart. Josh Hart will be effective as well too. But I don't think he'll be that. Guy. I also don't think Josh Hart will Josh be as good. Hart, no huh? disrespect to Josh Hart. I love Josh Hart. He's one of my favorite players to watch in the league. But he's the type of guy. The more minutes he plays, the better he plays. And no team is gonna give him forty minutes a game. It's just that's not you know like so he's gonna go somewhere and he's he's probably a 19 minute to 22 minute a game player i think he could be more than that i I mean i I don't i mean if he is if he what he does did for the knicks in the playoffs if he could be that person all the time then absolutely absolutely but i don't think that's who like you look at his numbers bro he was scoring 20 points a game in the playoffs the real thing with him is improving that jump shot if he, bro, if he, he was improve, shooting well in the playoffs. I know, I know, but which that, is, that's what I mean. I don't think that's real. Like, well, dude, could, averages nine points for his career. Just bro. from the information, a good friend of mine's a shooting coach in the NBA. So, just from the information of watching him shoot, I don't know if that shot will ever be consistent. Like the way the energy transfer is, bro. I I, yeah. I, I saw that dude lose in a three point contest to JJ Reddick's son, who was nine, I think. Yeah, yeah no, it's <laughs> interesting because I'm surprised when he hits them shits. He's yeah. surprised when he hits some shits, but he hits. He's cl- yeah. he's clutch. Yo, you seen he's the got one some tra- ice in the his one face. in transition. He hit. I yeah. was like, what the? He like double clutch that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. But it's uh, here's the thing, man. Like so, like I said, it's it's the energy of the team. So I think that the parts individually are not as good as the sum, you know, or the sum mm-hmm. of the parts. We well, you know that term, mm-hmm. you know. Um. So, um. Yeah, I think that. I think that Randall, like, I think I think they should get. I think they should probably trade him. I, I don't know about this whole Mikel Bridges thing. Like, that was Combo's idea. That's just going viral uh, too. I, I've heard pe- people people been talking about that since. That makes since, sense. Since, since, the thing is, it's like here it is. I was talking to my friend who coaches in the NBA, and he was talking about. I had that take before I talked to my friend, but he was saying that he agreed with me because. Mikel Bridges fits their identity in the playoffs more than Julius Randle does, even if Julius Randle could be better. You know, and I also think like when they say Julius Randle's a better NBA, like he's all NBA, Mikel Bridges like could play with the basketball in his hand. He can't create something out of nothing quite like Randle, but he plays off the ball better than Randle. Like he's just a better fit with Brunson. Yeah, I mean, I like I can see that. I mean, I could I could definitely see that. Like, he was averaging 27 that year that he went to the Nets, you know. And he like the second he, half of the season. No, I understand, but he doesn't have to do that with yeah, the Knicks. Yeah, he doesn't have yeah. to do that with the Knicks. Yeah, no. Like he, he could play with the ball in his hands. He's though. he's he's a, he's like a nineteen point a game. Scorer. He's a better spacer, like catch and shoot. He's a better defender. Man, niggas, niggas, man. When I said. Julius Randle was trash. That shit went really viral. That shit went viral. Niggas was on my neck. But there are now like, Knicks fans are like get rid of this nigga quick, bro. No, no, no. Hey, get rid of this on motherfucker. The thing that I posted that went basically viral today. There's a this split, bro. It's very split. It's very fifty fifty. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what it is, but Julius Randle don't got hold, love hold like thing. most Knicks players. Most Knicks players are like, man, people would take a bullet for like John Starks today. 
Oakley, all like all you know, are in the stands all, too. yo, people love Nick's players. People don't love Julius Randle like that. Like I feel like if Julius it's Randle, it's a body lo- language. I mean, yeah, if, if Julius, finger to the, I don't know what he yeah, did. I don't, down. yeah. If Julius Randle left, nobody would even remember he was a Nick, bro. That's sad, man. And this dude put in some good years yo, for y'all, man. Yo, he was he was the first nigga that was like, you know what? I'm going to New York. He he, yo. Speaking of that, he's a oh. grandfather of the team, bro. He brought he brought all these people. Speaking of that, people are saying that Jalen Brunson. I had a podcast about this too. Like, is is a better Nick than Carmelo Anthony? Man, that is that is the most recency bias shit I've ever heard. Like, like maybe Brunson was all NBA second team. I understand, but here's the thing. I think like. Brunson's already won more playoff games than Carmelo had in his career, which I understand that. But like more playoff points, yeah, just because he's been in more games, like that's just that's not fair though. But he hasn't been, yeah, he hasn't been yeah, there that yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't know. been there. It's not like he's been there ten years though. But it's, it doesn't matter. He's but played there, more games. But there, like if, but there could be a reason they're in more games too. right? No, well, I understand. He's like this team, that this team, this team is a better team. Like I mean, like here's the thing. I, I like I'm not I'm not even a huge Melo fan, but like the teams that Melo had was trash. Like, like, like they were not good teams. You know, like Melo didn't help the situation. You know, by just being an ISO score and not really getting players involved. But at the same time, like he didn't have n- nearly the team that the Knicks have now. Like Jalen Brunson has a, has a really really solid team, and they have a lot of pieces. Um, they have a they have a system in play. You know. Um, I don't know what they like, like, like with the Knicks, with the Dan and Tony Knicks, Dan and Tony hated Carmelo's style of basketball. Like they just didn't even mesh together. You know what I mean? So like him shoot stretching that three. Yeah, out. it was, it was just like, so like you Mello was Mello, put, you see the clip of Mello and the ref said, yo, we don't do bully ball anymore. You seen that clip? No, I didn't see it. So like his first time, you know, he took a hiatus from the NBA, obviously. And then he got back in the league. Right. And then uh, he bullied somebody, and the dude fell, and they call offensive foul. And like, nah, nah, Melo, it's over for that bully ball. We don't do that anymore in the NBA. Oh, the ref wow. told him. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I, I the see game that. changed on him. Yeah, I mean, Melo still had a great season with Portland, man. That was a great, great season. He's so talented. talented you know, guy. I was like, for, for someone who was out of the game, also 34, 35, whatever he was at that, you know, he, uh, I was, I was hope, I was hoping that, that was the piece to really help Portland get somewhere. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, the year before was bye-bye on Paul George, you know, and they, they went to the Western uh-huh. Conference. They went to the – was that the Western Conference Finals they went to mm-hmm. um, and lost. So I was expecting, oh, they got mellow now. This is the piece that's going to – and then they had a worse season. So, oh, man, this nigga head, bro. Sheesh. Well, good show. We got another one coming up next week. That's how they work, right? (laughs) Talk soon, man. All right.